Hi, I hope you're having a great day and welcome to our More Monday show where tonight it's a little bit different. I actually had not planned to come on, hence my t-shirt <laughs> and my, um, my hair. I had pre-recorded a show for tonight and it was ready to go live, um, but I had recorded it when I was pretty emotional and I uh, had just come back from a trip where we were celebrating the life of a dear friend who had passed. And so I had recorded that in the midst of just a lot of emotions and just didn't feel like I should post it just, um, just yet and just wanted to give some time um, to just let my emotions calm down. <laughs> because I, if there's one thing I always wanna do, it is to just speak God's heart and not Christy's heart. And although I think there's some wonderful things um, in that video, I do think that I had a lot of emotions go into, and I just want to make sure that, um, yeah, that I come on and, and say what God would have me to say. So I have not planned to say anything tonight because we just finished celebrating my daughter's 18th birthday. She turns 18 this week, and Tim and I celebrate 26 years together this week. So we... Um, just, uh, we're gonna have a nice family time together and then we all had that and everybody kind of scattered and then I started thinking about the post I was gonna make and decided to pull it. So it's pulled and you get me live. <laughs> so, wanted to show you something. Before I do talk about a couple things, I do wanna show you a couple pretty cute things. So I'm in my, my mama's office, my daddy's office. Ain't she cute? Yeah, me, yeah, that's me. And let me show you my 20-year-old self. Oh, yeah, baby. Everybody <laughs> everybody had a glamour shots back in the early 90s or late 80s. So, yeah. So, that was that. Anyway, um, this. And then I'll get back to my lesson. That's my mama Harris and my granddaddy Charlie who are up in heaven waiting for me. Hopefully it'll be a little bit longer before I join them. But um, yeah, so this is where a lot of my spiritual legacy comes from, is my, my granddaddy Charlie, who um, always was praying for me from the time I was born and to the time he took his last breath. He was praying for Tasty, is what he called me. And um, when he passed away, I wondered who was going to be praying for me then. And what it happened was God sent a whole army of men behind bars to be fasting for me and praying for the ministries that God had led me to be a part of in prison. And so we were talking about that the other day, our team, that we are just completely shocked and humbled and amazed at how many thousands and thousands of inmates pray for us. And that is what keeps us going. It really does keep us going. Um, I'm not gonna be on long tonight, because like I said, their family is, is down there, but I did wanna just touch on something that would build on last week's broadcast. And this is what I had pre-recorded, but um, I'm just gonna keep it a little less personal and just share some things that I know um, just from experience. And um, what I know I can share is that a dear friend of mine lost his life last week and um, this was a strong, strong Christian, someone who loved Jesus. And, and then he just, everywhere he'd go, he'd use his talents and his gifts to connect to people, to, um, to lead them to the Lord. That's not like what he was out there to do, like I gotta go save people, but he was just all about loving people. And if that opportunity came, he was gonna tell them about the joy that was in him. But for some reason, um, something happened, and we don't know. And it led to um, him losing his life um, and, and taking his life. And I just have to say, it's not the first strong Christian friend that I have had this happen to. And you probably yourself have known someone that it just, you just are like, wow, where did that come from? And... Last week, I spent a lot of time praying because I've interviewed a lot of people who had attempted suicide and did not, um, by the grace of God, they were not able to carry 
through with it. And then I know people who were just strong Christians and by the grace of God, he carried them home. And I don't know why one he would stop and why one he would just receive into his arms and bring him home. But there's just so much stigma to um, losing your life that way. And here's what I know. Losing your life that way, um, a lot of people in the Christian circles, or, or they say, you know, that's the unpardonable sin. That's something that God can't forgive, taking a life and like that. And I just, the unpardonable sin is rejecting Jesus. That's something you can't, the rejecting the Holy Spirit and not receiving I mean, you can't go back after you're gone and, and you know, rejecting Jesus. You can't go back and, and change that. That's the only thing that you can't come back from. <laughs> it's not cussing. It's not smoking. It's not murder. And um, there, we've talked a lot about ourselves. And, and last week, we talked about how we can experience a spirit of heaviness. And God wouldn't say, I give you a, a garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness if his people did not um, be at risk, if his people could not be at risk for experiencing a spirit of heaviness. And so God gives that spirit of praise, that garment of praise to help overcome that. But we see so many examples even in the bible where people suffered from depression godly people godly people and, and my my friend that passed did not suffer from depression and so we're not sure what happened but um that's not what i'm here to talk about but the reason i even wanted to bring this subject up is because last week i spent it was the most powerful more monday i think we've had yet and i spent a lot of time talking about the spirit of heaviness and how we can spiritually go to battle against it and it would lift like we could go to battle with praise we could go to battle with thanksgiving we could go to battle with the word of god and and standing together with our christian friends and those are all wonderful things but here's the deal my friend was doing all that and so yes there's a spiritual fight see here's what happens some people go and try to fight a spiritual fight with natural tools they try to you know maybe they're sick because it's a spiritual attack on their body and they're over here trying medicines and it ain't gonna work but then a lot of times it's it's an actual physical issue that's going on and we're trying to fight it spiritually and you know it's just we're three-part being Trying to really watch my words can you tell <laughs> here's all I know is there's three parts to us we got a body that is affected by every aspect of this world COVID um, and, and yes the Bible says we can take authority over things but we live in a fallen world where people get hurt and they they get colds and they um, you know, the food's not as nutritious as it used to be. There's chemicals in the air. And so all these things in this fallen world are coming against our mortal bodies. We also have a, a soul, which is our intellect, our mind, it's our emotions. And those things take a, take a beating in this world. You've got negative influences coming at you from all over, from TV, from people. You've got people's words they've spoken over you. You've got this battle in your mind. And those are the things the Bible talks about. You have to work out your salvation. You, it's not you have to work to be saved. It's just every day is a battle. And in this world, you will have trials. You'll have tribulations. But God says you can count it all joy because he's overcome the world. He's overcome it because he's, the blood of Jesus has saved us for all eternity. And then we have a spirit man. And so as a Christian, when your spirit man, when, when you put your faith and your trust in Jesus Christ, what happens is you are saved for all eternity. It's called born again. And my friend, Craig Llewellyn, um, his favorite verse, he, he was the gentleman just just passed away, dear friend. His favorite verse is from John, and it is, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes into the Father except 
through me. And so, you know, if you come to Father God through his son, Jesus, the Bible says your spirit man is saved. And your spirit man, I always think of it like this. Like I was a water skier. So picture with me a water ski glove or maybe... Um, a, if you were a, a golfer, you got a golf glove. That, that thing is just laying there until you slip your hand in it. And that's how our bodies are. Our bodies are just laying there. And then we have this spirit God gives and breathes life to us. And we, we're alive. And then when we die, our spirit man goes to heaven where God says we have a new body. And there is no more disease, no more pain. But that, that glove, that body, this, this my pastor Rob Morford, who I was under for many, many years, love him so much, he called this our earth suit. And this earth suit takes a beating. <laughs> and so last week I really talked about all the spiritual things that we can do. But I really wanted to do a part two and talk about all the um, things in the natural that we can do. First and foremost, as Christians, and, and this is just me observing this world and me talking with many people who have experienced um, a spirit of heaviness in their life. I had the opportunity through Victorious Living Magazine to um, write people's articles, to interview them, and there's so many people that say there is such a spirit of heaviness that comes on them, and they talk about just the darkness and how they couldn't fight it. They weren't able, they, they just were very overwhelmed by it. But then I've heard them talk about a lot of the things that were going on in their life. And, and I wanted to take some of those things and some things from my own life that at my lowest points, some of the contributing factors that can make it worse. So yes, I believe there is this spiritual war that we're in. The Bible says, for your weapons are not carnal and your war is not against flesh and blood. But again, we have a body and we have to take care of that body. And when our bodies are suffering, we have to, to the best of our ability, to humble ourselves and ask for help. And um, I think as Christians, a lot of times, we feel so guilty if we feel low. We feel so guilty if we feel fearful. And guilt and condemnation does not come from God. Guilt and condemnation comes from the enemy who wants to kill, steal, and destroy us according to John 10, 10. And so what happens is, at least I know in my experience, I would, I would be very afraid. I'm telling you, last year this time, I'm breathing in a paper bag because I'm hyperventilating from anxiety attacks over being able to pay payroll for our ministry. We're going to press and printing these magazines and there's no money in the bank and I've got to have $30,000 by tomorrow or whatever it would be and pay, you know, a lot of payroll tax because we've got a great staff and a team and I'm like, <gasps> you know, breathing in a bag because <laughs> of anxiety and, and so that led to a lot of fear and you know, a lot of that was I wasn't trusting God, and then I was entertaining thoughts of my leading the ministry the wrong way. And so I got in a battle myself. And some things that have helped me are one, talking to people. When you're afraid, when you're depressed, when you are anxious, you need to talk to somebody. And like I said, as Christians, we often feel guilty and we are embarrassed to tell anybody, I am so afraid right now because the first thing that me or someone else would say or some other Christian would come to you and say, well, God doesn't give you a spirit of fear, brother. First Timothy 1, 7 or 2 Timothy 1, 7. God does not give you a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. How do you like that voice? And so we feel condemned that we even um, are sad or anxious because the Bible says, don't be, don't be dismayed. And and so we feel guilty, or if we're sad, I remember laying in my closet in a fetal position at one point, and I was so feeling guilty because I had nothing to be sad about. My finances were taken care of, I had a wonderful husband, but yet I felt sad. And so I, I think Satan can have a filth day with us as Christians when we feel really off and we're embarrassed to go and tell someone because we feel condemned. 
and we feel they're going to condemn us. And so we get ourselves in a lot of situations because we are too afraid to, to go and to tell somebody about how we're feeling and what we're facing. So that would be the first thing I would suggest. If you're feeling anything, humble yourself. And then on the flip side of that, if you've got friends that you know just something's going on, ask the hard questions. Go and, and reach out to them and listen to the Holy Spirit of how to intervene. Don't just go cram yourself on somebody, but be there and be paying attention because we are in some crazy times right now. And there is a lot of, of spirit of heaviness and depression and fear coming on people. And the sad thing is the rate of suicide is, is up and it's going to go up because people are losing hope and they're confused and and so that would be one thing is to have those open dialogues with people, but also to take care of that mortal body. You know, if, if you go through life and you're not taking care, so let's say you're going 100 miles an hour, you don't have margin in your life, you have taken on too many commitments, you um, are eating terrible and you're not enjoying like stopping in the morning and just sitting and throughout the day and praising God and being thankful in your spirit and you're just running 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 from thing to thing eating whatever and this is me coming into this room after eating big old bowl of ice cream three huge scoops of this cake I made for my daughter and and we just put junk in and what happens is everything can be affected the way we feel the way we think and so some things that you can do are one, keep open eye, um, dialogue. Don't isolate yourself from people because isolation is the devil's playground. So, so be involved, be taking care of yourself. And if something's wrong, go see a doctor and, and go get help. And there's no shame in that. There's no shame in taking medicine. I'll probably get some, you know, there's people all over the camp. Your faith should should be enough, some people say. And, and I, you know, I believe God created doctors and he gives us the the, the herbs and the different things and, and com combinations of things to invent medicines that save lives. And so if, if you are blue and you, I always thought of that song, if you're blue and you don't know where to turn to, <laughs> where that came from. I'm crazy acting sometimes. But yes, if you're blue and you don't know how to turn to go, pray, ask the Lord to lead you to the right doctor and get, get some help. You know, I have a friend who, his, his wasn't depression, but he got into some really, um, made some really poor choice, choices in life because he knew he was in deep. He knew he needed help, but he was afraid to ask his Christian brothers and sisters. And so he kept getting in deeper and deeper and deeper and to the point where he ended up having to go to, to prison for 15 years. He's like, if I had reached out to someone, 15 years of my life wouldn't have been taken from me. And so, anyway, those are just some things that are on my heart. heart. I know as an athlete, I push and push and push and am so guilty of not taking care of my own self. I can preach it, but listen, I, when I hang up off of here, I, a lot of times, first thing I'll do is go and listen to it myself because I need it. I, I know this girl walked by some time, she's like, are you watching yourself? And I'm like, I am because I need, I need to be reminded about what I'm saying and I need to listen to myself. Even my husband, two or three weeks ago after one of these more Mondays, he says, I think it's because I was eating a bunch of chocolate. He goes, do you listen to yourselves on Monday nights? I'm like, actually, I do, but I wanted this chocolate. <laughs> so, anyway, I know it's a battle. It's a battle, but you're not alone in this battle. You know, um, the Lord gave me a wonderful analogy the other day that I was able to share at the, um, at the life celebration, the memorial service for my friend. I had the opportunity to speak and, and was able to sing that song, um, had practiced a little more than I had last Monday, but that song, Oh My Soul. And um, before I had gone there, I just asked the Lord, I'm like, Lord, show me what's happened here and show me something to encourage people. And I saw this picture in my mind of 
me in the water and other skiers in the water after a crash. And I could just see ourselves just scattered. You know, people always think water is soft. It's not soft when you're hitting it at 70 miles an hour and you're just tumbling and tumbling and tumbling. And, you know, we have had so many concussions. I met someone this weekend had like 20 concussions water skiing. And, and I, I know I've had a lot of them myself and diagnosed with that. But it's just, you just keep going and you just keep pushing. And, and so I saw this this image of myself as a skier, like just out. And I could see my, my friends, my jumping friends who had just crashed and I could just picture it and their helmets over here and their gloves are over there. And I mean, sometimes your bathing suit's ripped off and, and you're just laying there and sometimes you're face down and you can't, it's like that commercial, I've fallen and I can't get up. Well, it's, it's like you're going along okay and all of a sudden you just crash and you're stunned and you're unable to help yourself and you're laying there and God showed me he's like just challenged me he's like what happens when when you yard sailed on the water and you know like yard sale I've, I've said that since I was like you know it was a yard sale what it just means it's like an explosion out there on the water stuff's everywhere and what happens is, is the boat just turns around and it just speeds back to you. And then people just start jumping in the water to get in there with you. And I was led to a verse in Romans 6, I believe it is. See the Romans, maybe it's Romans 8. I think it's Romans 8. And it says that the Holy Spirit helps us in our weaknesses. And that word helps means that he jumps in. It's like he jumps into the waters of difficulty. The Bible says in Isaiah 43, 2, I will be with you as you pass through the waters of difficulty and they will not overtake you. And so God just showed me that picture of when we're just out and we, we can't breathe and we, we're in pain and, and we're just confused and we don't know where that obstacle even came from. We don't know how it happened and we want answers. And, but what God does is he come, he's there with us. And his Holy Spirit is there with us, jumping in the water, loving on us, and helping us in our weaknesses. And that weakness means it is it's brokenness of spirit. It's brokenness of mind and heart. It's not just like, oh, I'm too weak to do this on my own. It's like, I am too hurt. I am too confused. I am too broken to do this on my own. And God says the Holy Spirit is in there with us. And what else did God show me? He showed me that people, he sends people to jump in the water with us. I can remember crashing, being face down, and Mary, Go Mary Gail Holcomb jumped in that water, flipped me upside. I mean, I was face down out, flipped me back over. The stretchers were there and someone took me to the hospital. <laughs> and God sent people, there were people there. And, and that's what we are, we are people's res God's rescue mission to people too who are hurting. Like this week I got to go be with my friends and they were, they were hurting so bad. And um, I had to go just be a part of, part of the rescue team. And in the process, they rescued me because they were just so amazing and so hospitable and so full of grace and love. But I just want to encourage you, if you see people hurting, get in the water with them and, and help them. And if you are hurting, let people get in the water with you. Don't fight them. Don't push them away because they're there to help you. And God, it, God helps through the Holy Spirit, He helps through His Word, He helps through His just His healing touch and His love, but He also helps through people. And we are given each other, we need each other. Last week I had, um, I love you too, Michelle, <laughs> Connie, all of you. I, I'm live tonight and I can see these, these things popping up, but you now I've been lost. Michelle, you done made me lose my place. <laughs> so, anyway. Well, I'm just going to, oh, I know what it was. I was just, you know, I think about in the garden, 
Adam and Eve, when God created them, God created Eve to be a companion for Adam. And I'm not here to talk about marriage, but I am here to say that we were not meant to do life alone. And at the, a few minutes ago, I said, isolation is the devil's playground. And last week, I knew that it was a risk getting on that plane, according to the CDC and all of that. And, um, but I just knew people don't need to be alone when they're hurting. And you don't need to be alone when you're hurting. And I don't need to be alone. And I know we're supposed to isolate but we've got to stay connected. And I do believe there's a time that we have to touch and we have to be there for one another. And you know, I mean, we're told not even to elbow pump, pump and stay six, six feet away from each other, but I'm not advocating you running out and doing anything, but I know there's a time and a season for everything. And it was a season for my, my friends to get a hug. And so keep your eyes open Listen for the cries of people, even if they're not making them really loud. And love people. If you gotta hold your breath and go in and give someone a hug, do it. Do it. And um, I just think this world is hurting so bad. Here comes my emotions again. It hurts because I know what a godly man my friend was and how many loves he, lives he touched. But I also know that God told me that in those final moments, he just wrapped his arms around Craig and took him home. And right now he's walking on water with Jesus and he's not hurting. And so I know this is a touchy subject for a lot of Christians but I just encourage you to lay aside all your preconceived ideas about Christians and suicide and just listen to the Holy Spirit and just realize that Christians are human and they hurt and they need our grace, not our judgment and they need our love they don't need gossip. And so, um, let's be there for each other. And if you're hurting and you need prayer, please contact our ministry, 352-478-2098. Pat is there. He'll jump out of the shower and answer the phone. I know that's an image he just didn't need to have, but he'll do it. He does it. <laughs> I say, Pat, you can go to the bathroom without the phone. <laughs> But that's how committed he is and our team is. There he goes. He just stuck it up there, 352-478-2098. And if you need to talk to me, Pat knows how to get me. And um, we want to pray with y'all. And uh, I love you guys. And uh, thank you for watching tonight. And um, yeah, that's about it. So love you. I'm going to sign off and go get the snot off my face. <laughs> Talk to you later. I love you, Amber. Miss you. Bye.